Happy Halloween from Halloween Town. Welcome to Denton, Texas, Halloween Town, USA. Little D is just north of Dallas, Fort Worth, almost to Oklahoma. We're going to take you to a real haunted house, the most haunted house in Denton. Denton is known for its haunted tales. Destination Denton for all the haunted stories. But first, let's take you to Denton by day. We were at the Day of the Dead coffin races, the soapbox races, and we have a full length of video for you if you wanna check that out. We were right at the finishing line for the coffin races. And then we're going to take you deep into the darkness of night, telling you some haunted true stories around the Denton Square. Here we are along the back side of many of the haunted places and spaces within Denton. Here is the old opera house and the Texas building. And the old opera house is where recycled books and the paranormal stories are endless. spine-tingling fun as we celebrate the ultimate night of fright. <laughs> the courthouse, the historical courthouse, shadow figures and beings, many of them have names. Many people have seen them in the top windows for decades, and the founder, Denton himself, is buried right here on the grounds. The campus theater is known for its benevolent spirits. The actors, to this day, tell stories of the props, their props being moved, their costumes not being where they put them, and feeling all of the hairs from head to toe on their bodies standing on end, knowing they're not alone when they're on the stage. Many people live around the historical Denton Square and owe oh, the tales they have within their homes. The employees who live and work as well have stories. The restaurants, the businesses around the square. Many of the spirits have names. They've taken on these names because they've become so well known. Experienced by many over the decades. The Texas building, which is also the old historical Lacey Hotel, where the number one restaurant in Denton, Barley and Board is, recently had a fire, a kitchen fire, in the summer of 2024. And as the firefighters were putting out the fire, and thankfully it was just a stove fire, there was a presence that could be felt along the back staircase, this thick shadow presence. 
that many experience before and after the fire, but standing right in the middle of the restaurant, they could see along the back wall on the staircase a thick, shadowy presence. Now, many tales at the Barley and Board restaurant speak of items moving. One employee tells the story of unpacking all of the cups and lids and straws to go items out of a box in that upstairs area by the back staircase where the shadowy, shadowy figure has been seen. And as he unpacked the box, he looks back and the cups, everything has been returned back to the box. Items moving and the shadow presence felt. Welcome to the Cherry Orchard. Denton is known for its creativity, and this is the Cherry Orchard, where artists have created these whimsical Halloween-themed chairs. And this Cherry Orchard sits right next to the graveyard. Now, I'm going to take you to this graveyard, but it's more of a comic relief. It's more of a comedy graveyard, and you'll see what I mean. However, Denton does have a haunted graveyard, and it's a little bit like this chair of despair. Mirror, mirror on the wall. What's the greatest Mandela effect of all? So Denton is known for the Day of the Dead, Coffin Races. Again, we have a video for you on that. And as we move from the Cherry Orchard into the Comedy Graveyard, I would like to tell you a story of the haunted graveyard here in Denton. There is a graveyard where... Incredibly enough, the actual haunted house that I'm going to be taking you to here, the owner of the house who was murdered is buried. That's right. So the haunted house that I'm going to be taking you to is called the Palace Selby House. And I believe it is the most haunted place in Denton. Next to the Denton Square that we're currently in, the Texas building where Barley and Board is, you can feel the spirits, even the campus theater. But the Palace Selby House just down the street from the square this is by far the most haunted of all the places in Denton. The original owner had a two bedroom house built and now this house I'm going to take you to is this beautiful Victorian home. It's very large now. So there's been additions to this home. But when it was first built long ago, over a hundred years ago, the owner of the home was married and had children. And there was an argument that broke out. And he ran back into his home to grab his, his gun. And his wife was horrified by all the blood that she saw on him. He did not even realize he had been stabbed. And he passed before a doctor could even arrive. And so it was quite the chatter in town. And many believe that he moves from the cemetery down the street, the real cemetery in Denton, back and forth to his home at the Palace Selby home that I'm going to take you to. However, many believe they feel that there is a 
a woman, a female presence within that home. I will say this, the real cemetery, not this cemetery, the real cemetery has a presence. It is creepy. And it's just down the street from the haunted house I'm going to be taking you to, which is less than a mile from where we are right now. Debbie Downer. Don't we all have a Debbie Downer? <laughs> We've all known a Debbie Downer. So come with me to the Bayless Selby house. Now, my husband and I are the only people here when we pre-recorded this for you. And we experienced a lot when we were here. We wanted to be as quiet, as silent as possible. And I did not use my GoPro because it doesn't do as well at night. I had so many problems with my camera, you'll see in just a moment, which I didn't have all night while I was recording this video for you. And here in just a moment, we experienced something up in this tree to the right. I'm gonna turn the audio up all the way for you so you can hear. Up in this tree over this water well was a very loud noise in the tree. I don't know if you heard it. You might have to go back. It was a really loud sound, like the whole top of the tree to the right, right above that water well moved. And then you can hear wings flapping of a very, very large bird. Now my husband and I, we know birds. We're birders. We love birds. The wings on this bird would have had to been huge, like an owl. The whole tree moved. Now, there's an air conditioning unit on the other side of the water well. You can see it. The air conditioning was on. The tree was moving. I even turned the camera off here in just a little bit so we could talk about it because it freaked us out. And you can see I'm looking up here now. We did not see a bird. There are floodlights. And this is, for me, the creepiest part of the house. These windows, I'm constantly seeing the curtains move. I feel like I feel a, whim, a woman's presence and I feel like sometimes I can see like a white dress or nightgown or negligee. I've been to this home many times, day and night, and I always feel a presence and I will not go into the home. You can go inside this historical home during the day. There's a community market on the front lawn on the weekends and I still will not go closer than where I am right now to this house. I get really freaked out. We agreed we were going to come and shoot this video for you and really allow anything to happen. Like whatever we capture and my camera was going off. The autofocus, I can't explain it. Like I couldn't figure out what the camera was doing, why it kept auto focusing. It did not do this all night long, but the minute we walk up, there's something in the tree. It sounds like a very large bird, like the wingspan. I can't even imagine how large it would be to make that loud of a noise. And then to not see a shadow or actually see anything fly away really freaked both of us out. So my husband is sitting back on a bench to my right behind me. He did not get up the whole time I walk around this house. And right as I'm turning the side of this house, I feel like somebody is standing beside me or behind me. Now the sprinklers were going off. You can hear the sprinklers in the field in front of the house. This is where there's a community market during the day. So you can walk in this field. And I'll have to say the landscaping and the flowers are just gorgeous around this home. There's bunny rabbits, so rabbits were hopping. I could see them, I could sense them. They weren't freaking me out. I felt like somebody at this point was standing with me. 
and it really creeped me out. Now, by the time I got to the front of the house, that presence that I was feeling standing with me was gone. My husband is still on the left-hand side of the house sitting on a bench. He did not move from the bench because he was staring at the tree where the bird or whatever, it freaked us out so much and he could not explain it. Now, my husband, he loves scary movies. He's not sensitive with anything scary. He does not fright easily. (laughs) I, on the other hand, am very sensitive, intuition, psychic abilities, and I do sense things and feel things. And so for me, this is as close as I'm willing to get to this house. It freaks me out. He has never felt anything from this house, but the minute we walked up, he felt something this time. And when whatever that thing happened in the tree, and we can hear the wings, but it was unexplainable. It, it was weird. It freaked him out so much. He stayed sitting over there watching. Now, for me, I'm constantly looking at the windows and the curtains. They have white lace curtains in the windows here. Now, maybe the shades and the white lace curtains give off, you know, some kind of an allusion to a white dress, but I have been here many a times and I always feel a female presence in the home going window to window following me. And I've seen so many things. But this time, there were two times I felt a presence standing outside with me. And the story of this home, which I mentioned before, is the original owner. He built it as a two-bedroom, small little farmhouse. And here's the information, the historical information on the house for you. And there was some kind of argument. And he was murdered right here in the house. Now, the story goes, his wife and children moved out and she sold the house. And then there were other people that owned this house. So there could have been another family or a woman or something associated with this. But the tale goes that the man was is buried just down the street right behind me here. I mean, we could walk there. It's in walking distance, the cemetery, and that people say that he moves between the cemetery and this home. Now, as I go around the back of this house, I felt like somebody was standing behind me. And I really thought I was going to turn around and there would be an actual human, (laughs) like people walking around. But nobody was there when I turned around. And I thought for sure somebody was standing behind me. I could hear footsteps in the rocks. There's a parking lot behind the house to the right here. Now you can see through the window to the other side where the tree is, where that bird was or whatever in the tree. That's where my husband's sitting is on the other side of the house. And so here to the right behind the house, there's a gravel little parking lot. And I could, I could hear footsteps in the gravel. And this is where I get freaked out again, just walking. And my husband's just right here in front of me on a bench and I can see him, but I'm freaked out and I'm trying to walk fast. So now we're back to the well and the tree. We've made a 360 all the way around the building. So as the husband carves a pumpkin for you, I want to tell you about the old Anton Bridge, the Goatman's Bridge. Now, we have Texas Women's University and the University of North Texas. I went to the University of North Texas in the early 90s, so I have a lot of haunted stories of Denton from the early 90s. And both the University of North Texas and Texas Women's University have historical buildings, and both universities are known for their haunted buildings. And many of the college students in the dorms tell their stories as well. I lived in Maple Hall in the University of North Texas, and we would hear whispers and giggling in the halls at night. It was super creepy in the 90s. So, Denton is known for the old Anton Bridge, Goatman's Bridge. The Ghost Adventures did a story 
and they told a story of a hundred years ago and different schmurders that had happened. And so we've known about these stories for so long. So back in the nineties, when I was in college at the University of North Texas, we would go to the old Anton Bridge. It's cool. It's creepy. It's perfect for a creep fest ghost story adventure. However, I've never felt anything haunted there. And back in the nineties, people would drive on this bridge. Now there's a new bridge and it's not really a bridge at all. The new road is super busy, but the old bridge was never really busy. It was off the beaten path. It was secluded and hidden. And so really old Anton bridge was known for more of drinking beer with your college buddies than it was for real ghost stories. So now that area is a park and people have gone out there and created different kind of shrines and memorials and symbolism out there. And so it's more for show than it is a true ghost story.